Hello, I am Seamus Dunhu of EVE University, and this is Episode 3 of How to Survive EVE Online. We are going to finish up Steps 5 through 10 each of both the industry and the business chains. So, while waiting for my last video to process, I went through and added a bunch of skills to my uh, skill training queue, and I'm training those up now. Uh, I mentioned I gave you the full list, I think, in the previous episode. So I have all of that queued up, and I still have one day, 19 hours total on my skill training queue. So I don't have to worry about this until tomorrow. Let's get started on the next steps. So right-click Hoover and right-click Leucht Mincier, uh, or whoever the industry and business agents are for your tutorial hub. And the fifth steps of both chains are both courier missions, which are several jumps out which is why you should probably run these at the same time. That way you get this out of the way at the same time, rather than go out several jumps, come back several jumps, go out several jumps, come back several jumps, that's four trips. Do it this way, you go out several jumps, you go to some other place several jumps, you come back several jumps. That's only three trips. Hmm? So, first of all, in my particular case, both of these drop-off destinations happen to be the same solar system. That's coincidence. It just happened to turn out like that for me. It might just happen to turn out that way for you, but uh, most of the time you're not going to be so lucky, and it's going to be three different solar systems. So for the first objective, uh, I am need to right-click the drop-off location, set destination. For the other mission, right-click the location, add waypoint. If you hit set destination again, that wipes out the first waypoint and then sets your new destination as the first waypoint. I'm then going to right click Clullanon and add waypoint because I'm coming right back here. All right. You also want to double check your route. Make sure that these are all yellow, green, or blue because that indicates high security space. If any of them are orange or red, then your route is going into low security space for some reason, which really should not be happening for the tutorial missions. But in case that it is, uh, let me click accept on both of these missions. Oh, and double left click on the empty background if you're looking at the ship hangar. Otherwise, just right click your ship, which has the box around it, and open cargo hold which is also a toggle. There we go. The encoded data chip, make sure that goes in your cargo hold. Let's close this. Uh, let's click accept on this one. You need to move some electronic parts, drag that in, and then we can close this. Close the cargo hold, and let's undock and get moving. So, as before, I've set my route before I even undocked, so I look for the yellow stargate, left click, and I click jump. Again, if you've got multiple yellow stargates, your next solar system is going to be listed up here. In this case, the next system in route is Luce, so you look on your overview for stargate Luce, you left click it, and you click jump, or you can right click the stargate and click jump. Either method works. Okay. And you're going to be hopping through multiple stargates. While we're moving, let's talk about the map. So this is the map icon here on the overview. Uh, I mean, on the Neocom. Or you can go to the EVE menu, and you can go to map. Or if you didn't change any of your shortcuts, you can hit F10, but I'll wait till I jump through the gate first. Waiting to jump through the gate. Uh, let's see. Next system in route is Aletta. Okay, there's Stargate Aletta. I'm going to click jump. I can hit F10 on my keyboard to bring up the star map. Now, it starts off flattened. I don't like flattened. I'm going to take this world map control panel, I'm going to drag it up here, and I'm going to click the unflatten button. There we go. 
on his mouse wheel down to zoom in on everything. And then I'm going to right click an empty spot and select current solar system. And we are in the Verge Vendor region. Let me make that label go away. Uh, star map tab, label sub tab, no region names. I don't need that in my way. All right, so you can right click and drag an empty spot just to pan your camera up, down, left, or right. By the way, I just jumped into Aletta. My overview just changed. Uh, next system in route, Sistavere. Left click Stargate Sistavere, click jump. Warp drive active. So here on the star map, it says you are here, and this is Aletta. And you can left click Aletta to center your camera on the Aletta solar system. And the route is displayed here. It's colored. So you can see the route that you have plotted and how it's traveling through the Stargate network. So we're going to go through Sista... I'm going to go through Sistavere, Alentine, Scalooser, Gisleries, all the way to Elmay. Both of my courier destinations happen to be in Elmay. On the way back, I'm going to follow a different route. Gisleries, Ansal, Juvit, Sheenans, Ve, Luce, and Clelalon. These two pathways to Elmay are equal routes in terms of the number of jumps. Uh, hold on, I just jumped through a Stargate again. The way I can tell is that my whole overview changed, and my current solar system is always displayed in the upper left corner. Left click the yellow Stargate, there's only one, and I'm going to jump. So, from Elmay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven jumps back to Clolon, and from Clolon to Elmay was one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So, eight jumps in either direction. So, there were two different routes. Hold on, what? One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh, I'm sorry, seven jumps in each direction. So there were two different routes that were both seven jumps long, so for some strange reason my autopilot decided to take one path to get there and a different path to get back. Sometimes it does that. So this is the Stargate network, and I just jumped through a gate again. Left click Scalooser, jump, and my ship will warp to the next gate. So, here you have all the different solar systems in, e in known space, all connected by the Stargate network. Uh, right now it's colored according to security status, but you can color it for different information. So for example, if I go to the world map control panel, star map tab, the stars sub tab, right now it's security status. I can have it display a whole bunch of other information, like say, uh, my information, Systems I've visited. Oh, that's drowned out by the route itself. Hmm. Planets. If I'm looking for plasma planets for planetary interaction, I can color the solar systems according to that information. Or if I'm looking for temperate planets, I can do that. Or maybe I'm looking for cloning surfaces. These are solar systems where I can find... Oh, I didn't notice that I'm in the next system. Let me get moving. Next system in route, Gisleries. That's Stargate Gisleries. All right. So I can color the star map according to all sorts of different information. Most of this isn't going to make sense to you right away, but as you play the game, uh, you'll understand what each of the map options are and what types of information they convey. Most of the time, you're concerned with security status. Again, yellow, green, and blue is high security space. If other players shoot at you unprovoked, they will be destroyed by the Concord police. Orange and red are more dangerous, but can be more profitable. profitable. Speaking of pl uh, areas of space being dangerous, um, if your ship is reduced to zero structure, it will be completely destroyed. 
it will not be automatically replaced for you. So if you lose your ship, then you will have to get a replacement ship out of your own pocket. You'll have to pay for it. You'll either have to build it, or you'll have to buy one off the market. Maybe some of your cargo and modules might have survived in the wreckage, but def but usually not all of them, and that's assuming nobody else stole from your corpse, uh, that nobody else stole from your wreck before you were able to get back to it with a new ship. So generally speaking, if your ship is destroyed, you've lost, you've definitely lost the ship itself, you've definitely lost any rigs that were attached to the ship, uh, and chances are pretty good you're going to lose most of the modules and the cargo that were on board, but it is possible to recover some of the modules and cargo. <laughs> and my capacitor ran empty before I could get all the way to Stargate Enemy. Let me try warping there again. Sometimes you have really long... What is going on here? Oh, don't tell me the... Don't tell me the client lost connection. Warp drive active. Sorry, just a buggy interface for a moment. Don't know why that happened. Alright, so I am in warp to Stargate Elme again. I ran out of, cap out of capacitor uh, midway through the warp. Sometimes really long warps will empty out your capacitor and you have to make several warps to cross the solar system. Alright, here we are in Elme. Uh, both of my courier destinations are in the solar system, but they're different stations. So, I am going to resort this by distance closest to the top. Let me go to the closest station first and dock up. Warp drive active. By the way, it's worth noting that the stargates do not indicate the security status, the security level of the system on the other side of the gate. If you want to know the security level of the system on the other side of the gate, you do have to look at the star map and take a close look at your surroundings. Uh, for example, Elme has two stargates, Gisleries and Therus. Therus is security status 0.9, but I wouldn't know that unless I looked at the map or if I jumped through the gate. Alright, I'm docked up. I don't remember... I honestly don't remember which agent this cargo is for. Here we go. Elme 1 X Sense Chemical Storage. That's where I happen to be docked. Everything is screen check marks here, so I can click Complete Mission. It'll take the cargo right out of my ship's cargo hold. So the electronic parts are now gone. And I can close this conversation window. Had I opened up the wrong one, there'd be a yellow circle here. Indeed, you see this is a yellow circle, so I'm in the wrong station to complete this mission. So let me undock and finish the other courier mission. Left click the other yellow station and dock. By the way, the stations do have collidable parts. Again, collisions don't normally cause damage, uh, but if you're bumping into things, it does prevent you from going to warp. So you might need to get clear of the station a little bit uh, before you can actually dock up. It's also worth noting that uh, stations have what I call a zero sphere around them. They're more commonly called the docking perimeter. 
uh, but not everything within the docking perimeter is solid. You, there are empty spaces within the docking perimeter that are empty. You can fly through them, you're not bumping into anything, but you're still considered to be zero meters from the station. That's perfectly normal. Uh, it's just that some stations have geometries that if you turn in particular directions, you start bumping into things. Right-click Loic Tementier, or whoever the appropriate agent is, if everything screen check marks, uh, then you can complete the mission. Usually, rewards for a mission are ISK and or loyalty points, which are... which are not items. If a reward is an item, then it's going to appear in your station's item hanger in the station where the agent is located. So the reward here is an expanded cargo hold 1. But it doesn't appear here because this isn't the correct station. It's now in my items hangar back in Clelalon 6, Moon 11, Center for Advanced Study School. I don't see it here in the lower right corner because I'm in Elmay 9, Moon 2, Nogwehuvi Corporation Development Studio. Completely the wrong station. So if I want to pick up this item reward, I've got to go back to Clelalon. All right, so just something to keep in mind, if a mission reward is an item rather than money, then the item will appear in your station item hangar in the agent's station, wherever the agent is located. All right. Warp drive active. I'm gonna return to Clonon. That's seven jumps. I'm not gonna bore you with all seven Stargate hops all the way back to Clonon, so I will skip ahead. Alright, I have skipped ahead to the point where I just returned to the station in Clelon. We're gonna get started on the next couple of missions in these chains. Let me take a look at these two agents. Okay. Uh, Hoovernair wants us to manufacture some cap boosters for him. Or whoever the industry agent is in your tutorial hub. Uh, so if you accept this mission, uh, you will be given a blueprint copy to work with, and you will manufacture some cap boosters. It's the same procedure as when we manufactured the civilian afterburners. Uh, if you left click the icon here, you will be shown you will show info on the blueprint in question, and you can see you are going to need titanium, pyrite, and something else called Mexilon. Well, we have the tritanium. Well, hold on, we have most of the tritanium. One step at a time. Uh, let me get rid of the conversation with Lake Dementia for a moment. And let's just accept this industry. Making mountains and molehills 6 of 10. And let's close this. And we are going to right-click the blueprint and show info. Now, under the Bill of Materials tab, the Manufacturing sub-tab, uh, we have the industry skill, that doesn't change. We need the Jutanium, the Pyrite, and the Mexilon. Uh, if I wanted to, I could go out and try to mine something that contains Mexilon. I'd have to leave Clelalon to do that. It's probably easier if I just right-click Mexilon and view market details. And let's see, is anybody selling Mexilon here in station? Yes. A little bit pricey, but we only need a small amount, about 30 of it. So right-click, buy this, make sure it's in station, otherwise you're going to have to travel to go get it. And we are going to buy 30 Mexilon, that'll cost us only 1600 esk. Chump change even by our standards. Um, remember, this needs two runs, so we need 15 Mexilon for a single run, that means we need 30 if we're going to do this twice. Pyrite needs 48 per run, so we need 96. Tritanium, we need about 200 per run, so we need about 400 total. I've only got 322. I've got the Pyrite, I just bought the Mexilon. Uh, I'm just missing some of the Tritanium, so I'm going to right-click, view market details, I need... Let's see, math, 396 minus uh, 322, 
74. I need 74 Tritanium. So what's the cheapest Tritanium in station? Here we go. Right click station, buy this 74 Tritanium. That's only going to be 332 ISK. Done, done. All right. Now, I'm going to right click the blueprint. View market deet. Uh, not view market details, I'm sorry. Uh, right click manufacturing. Pick an installation. Ah, good. Some of the assembly lines are free. I'm going to left click a free assembly line. I'm going to use this assembly line. I'm going to put two runs and click OK. It's going to cost me 11, uh, about 1,000 ISK to do this job. So I'm going to click accept quote. And you know what? I forgot to check to see how long this is going to take. Uh, get jobs. Three minutes. Alright. So while that's cooking, I will right click Blake Dementier, start conversation with him. He wants us to obtain a tracking computer. He doesn't care how we obtain it, he just wants us to get him a tracking computer. So we're going to click accept, and the built in game text tutorials will throw some text at you about the market, which is what we need to do next. Uh, let me get this out of the way. I think I already told you... Uh, ah, yes, never buy anything... Never buy anything you can't afford to lose. That's reasonably wise. Never fly anything you cannot afford to lose. It's like I was saying earlier. If your ship is destroyed, you lose the ship, you lose the rigs, you're liable to lose all the modules if somebody else steals from your wreck. You're liable to lose all your cargo if somebody steals from the wreck. Your pod does not have cargo space. You're just going to be getting yourself out of there, and when you come back with another ship, maybe your wreck will be empty. Maybe not. Who knows? And it will throw another two skill books at you. Let's see if I can inject these. Alright. So... Let's go to the market. Or actually, you know what? Let's close the market. I can right-click the icon of the tracking computer and view market details. And there we go, tracking computers. Or if I wanted to, I could go to the search tab and I could type in tracking computer. And I just select tracking computer one. Either method works. I'm gonna right-click station because it doesn't help me if it's in another station four jumps away. Uh, I'm going to buy this. Just get one tracking computer. Alright. So, we have the tracking computer. This is still a yellow circle because the window hasn't updated yet. If I close it and I right-click like Mencier and start conversation again, it will update properly and we have all green check marks. We can complete the mission. Let's request the next mission. And Leuk Mencier wants us to use a civilian analyzer, which he will provide us, and go check some ancient site or whatever. We're going to have to shoot some Serpentis while we're there. It's exactly like a mission where we had to use the Codebreaker. Uh, so, it takes place in Clullanon, so we don't have to set a Stargate route. This site contains special ship restrictions. If I left-click this, ships permitted... Uh, destroyers, rookie ships, frigates, cruisers, industrials, and shuttles. We are flying a frigate right now. Alright, so that's good. Uh, we will click accept. And the game will talk about multiple acceleration gates. I will talk about that later when we get in there. Uh, let me close this. Did our manufacturing job finish yet? Yes, it did. So let me take care of this part first. By the way, just to slow down and cover that again, I'm going to Neocom, Science and Industry, if it's on the Neocom, or I can go to the EVE menu, Business, Science and Industry, the Jobs tab, the Get Jobs button. I can left-click the job in question and deliver. And there are the Cap Booster 25s. I can right-click Hoover and start conversation. Everything's green check marks. I can turn in this. I can turn in the mission. By the way, the other way to do this mission 
I could have just simply kept the blueprint and done nothing with it, and just right-click Cap Booster 25, view market details, and bought Cap Booster 25s off the market. They're horribly priced here in Clelanon, so it's a good thing I just simply decided to manufacture the things myself, rather than purchase them at their inflated prices. Ah, mechanics level 3, very good. So, yeah, right now prices are very inflated. This is a an actual market. Other EVE Online players are buying and selling things on the market all the time. So the prices will change, the circumstances will be different from place to place and time to time. But if I wanted to, I could have bought cap boosters off the market and just given those to the agent. The agent only cares about the green check marks or yellow circles here. Ultimately, Ruhu Vrenair didn't care where, whether or not we built the things ourselves, he just cares whether or not uh, we have them. So I'm going to complete the mission and request the next mission. Alright, this is a courier mission. I'm not going to do that right now. Alright, let me go to fitting. And again, I can either click the fitting button here on the right or on the Neocom on the left, or I can go to the EVE menu and go to Fitting. Any of those methods work. I don't need the Civilian Codebreaker. I do need the Civilian Analyzer. By the way, one of the agents gave us an Afterburner. Uh, can I fit that Afterburner on? Mm... No, I don't. I didn't finish training the Afterburner skill yet. Never mind. Plus, it looks like I probably wouldn't have enough power grid anyway. Alright, I'm going to close the fitting window. Let's undock. Alright, we are in space. Right-click empty space. Balancing the books, 7 of 10, Loic Dementier. Encounter dead space. Warped location. And I should control R to reload my weapons. Right. Here's the acceleration gate. Right-click the gate. Activate. Warp drive active. Now, sometimes there is more than one acceleration gate involved. And yes, indeed, there is the next acceleration gate. So, if I click Activate Gate again, my ship will automatically approach the second gate and attempt to activate it. Which may or may not be possible, sometimes the gate is guarded. Meaning that you have to kill the hostile NPCs that are nearby before you are allowed to activate the gate. Let's con lock, target lock these Corelli Initiates. And remember, our weapon is effective at 2 kilometers. And I don't know if this gate will activate. Yes, it will. It activates because it is not guarded. So we can skip those NPCs. And there's the ancient ship structure. Left click. Approach. I'm going to target lock both Corelli initiates. I'm going to try to target lock. I can't do that. I'm already managing two targets, as many as you have the skill to. Right! Next thing I'm doing when I dock up in station, I'm getting the targeting skill book. Because my ship electronics can handle three targets. It says so right here. Max lock targets three. 
It's just my lack of skills that keeps me down at two. All right. Select one initiate. Shoot it. And control spacebar since I think we're close enough. All right. Hit F1 again to shoot the remaining Corelli initiate. All right. That's done. Uh, these wreck icons are empty, meaning that there's no loot on them. So, I'm going to target lock the ancient ship structure. If I just try to open cargo, it tells me you cannot access the ancient ship structure without specialized equipment. Which means, use the civilian analyzer. <laughs> and now we wait another 30 cycles, or however many long this, however long this takes. For some of these really simple missions, the game will provide you with a civilian codebreaker, a civilian analyzer, or a civilian salvager, uh, because the game doesn't expect you to have the skills trained up yet to use a real salvager, or a real codebreaker, or a real analyzer yet. Oh, it succeeded. Okay. Uh, now I can open the cargo, and I can click loot all. There, we have everything. Left click the station, click dock. Warp drive active. I got lucky. I didn't even have to skip anything in this waiting through the video. And I'm bumping into something. Control space bar. Double left click off to this side. Now I'm gonna dock. Drive Control R to reload my weapons. How much spare ammo do I have? Oh, by the way, um, a little note about the notation here. Remember that I grouped my weapons. So, if I open up the fitting window, each weapon has the number one in a circle, indicating that they are both represented in the first module slot. If I right-click the guns and I select Clear Group, they will appear as two separate module icons. I can shift, left-click, and drag one onto the other to remerge them. The number in the red zone indicates how many modules are grouped, and the number in the black zone indicates how many charges each weapon has. So there's two of them loaded with 200 charges each. That means I've got 400 charges in my guns. Alright. Right click Lloyd Tmincier, start conversation. Complete the mission. Everything is reading check marks. Request the next mission. Uh, this is a courier mission. Only one jump out to lose, say. But Hoover Nair also wanted us to do courier missions. So let's take care of that at the same time. And he also wants us to go to Luce. A different station in Luce, but still Luce. These missions will be one jump out. That's the seventh step of the industry and eighth step of the business chain. So right click, set destination, go to the other one, right click, add waypoint, right click Clullamon, add waypoint. And we need to move the center. Ah, that's a survey skill. Um, we need to move a central data core and the cap boosters. So I'm going to click accept on one, close it, click accept on the other, close it, and actually drag the cargo up into here. While your items window is open, anything new that appears will automatically be appended to the bottom of the list. Although it is always possible to right click and sort by type or sort by something else. So if you leave the station and come back, everything's going to be sorted. Keep in mind what your cargo is and what you need to move. And you know what? I'm running out of ammunition. Let me see whether there are any... Antimatter Charge S. Oh, right now? Cheapest is right here in Clullamon. Okay. I know I'm going to need quite a bit, so... Partly because I think one of the tutorial missions asks for 5,000 charges. Uh, I want to have some spares, so I will buy... 8,000 charges. That's going to cost me 119,000 ISK, but that's okay. I'm over a million, so it should be fine. I'm going to close this. 
look for my antimatter charges. I'm going to hold down the shift key and then left click and drag from here up to here and let go of the mouse button. And then let go of the shift key. And it will ask me how many I want to move. I'm just going to move 1,000. Alright. Let's undock. Scroll down, click on Luce, click Jump. All of the tutorial hubs have a few features in common, namely they are very high security systems, 0.8 or higher if I remember correctly. They also have only one Stargate link. So there's only one Stargate route into or out of any given tutorial system. Or any given career funnel hub, I should say. So if the mission sends you one jump out from a career funnel hub, it has to go to one place. In our case, that's Luce. In your case, if you chose a different race, or maybe you chose the Federal Navy Academy, or University of Kai, it'll still be something similar. There's only going to be one Stargate out from your career funnel hub. All right, here we are. Left click the nearest station and dock. Warp drive active. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. All right. We're docked up in one station. By the way, agents that you're on missions for or who are offering missions to you will always appear in agents of interest up here. That doesn't necessarily mean, though, that they're present in the station that you're located at. So... In those cases, it will explicitly state the agent's location. In this case, they're both in Klalanon, rather than here in Luce with you. They did not stow away on board your ship. I'm going to right-click one of them. Start conversation. Uh, yellow circle. This is the wrong agent. Right-click the other agent. Start conversation. Green check marks. Going to complete the mission. And the, Im the game is going to tell you about implants. Uh, and it's going to give you a cybernetic skill book. Make sure you shove that into your cargo hold. I will right, we'll talk more about skill plants later. Implants later. Close this and undock. Let's go to the other station. Right, click the other yellow station and hit dock and our ship will warp there. Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright. Right click who Vernier or whichever agent still has an accepted rather than an offered mission. Everything's green check marks. Complete the mission. And as before, when the reward is an item, it will be located in your station items hangar in the agent's station. So I now have a new overdrive injector system 1, 
and a new limited social adaptation ship from Lloyd's Mencier waiting for me in Clalodon 6, Moon 11, Center for Advanced Studies School. I'm going to close this, undock. Hold on. Can I inject this yet? Oh, I can inject cybernetics. Good. Let me go to my tr skill training queue. I happen to remember cybernetics is under science, but if you don't know or you don't remember, you can type in part of the skill name into the filter. Ah, there's cybernetics. That's a bit more important than survey. I'm going to slot that in at the top and click apply. And train that up to level one. That'll take about 25 minutes. And close. Now we undock. Now, since the game brought up the subject of implants, I'm going to talk about that a little bit while I am warping back to Clolamon. Well, to Clolamon Gate. Uh, if I open up the training queue again... It takes time to train various skills. Cybernetics 1 is going to take another 24 minutes. Survey to finish it where I left it off at is going to take another 32 minutes. Energy grid upgrades level 1 will take 17 minutes. Uh, level 2 will take an hour and 17 minutes. Level 1 energy management is going to take 25 minutes, and so on and so forth. Skill training is something you're going to be doing on your main character, starting from the moment uh, that you start playing the game, and never stopping. There are things you can do to influence the skill training time. Uh, let's see. Left-click the station, click talk. So if I show info on any skill, it's going to say that it's got a primary and a secondary attribute. What do these mean? Well, if I go to the character sheet, and I go to attributes, I have a bunch of attributes. Intelligence, perception, charisma, willpower, memory. Everybody has these five attributes. Every single character in EVE Online. As a new character, you start off with all 20s across the board, except Charisma, which starts off one point lower. The rate at which you generate skill points is your primary, plus one half your secondary, every minute. So while I'm working, if, when I eventually get to energy grid upgrades, uh, my intelligence is 20, my memory is also 20. So half the, half the secondary, that is half the memory, Half of 20 is 10, so 20 plus half of 20 is 30. Once I get to energy grid upgrades, I'll be generating 30 skill points per minute. Or, uh, let's see, uh, I'm training cybernetics right now, that's also intelligence memory. Right now I'm generating 30 skill points per minute, or one every two seconds. And I can actually, if I collapse all of these, I don't need all of these displayed. So if I look at uh, cybernetics here, 83, 84, 85, yeah, that feels like one every two seconds. Alright, so the higher your attributes, the faster you train skills. There are two ways in which you can influence your attributes. One is by implants. So if I right click this implant and show info, it will increase my charisma by one point. Implants can go as can go as high as plus five. The most expensive ones are plus fives. So if you've got a head full of plus fives, but you didn't otherwise adjust your attributes, then you're going to be 25 intelligence, 25 perception, 24 charisma, 25 willpower, 25 memory. Most things are going to train at about 37.5 skill points per minute. The other way you can adjust your attributes is by a neural remap. If you click the Remap Now button, don't worry, this button is safe, you'll be presented with a diagram of your current attributes. Everybody has a base of 17 across the board. That can be increased by implants, but certain points are remappable. So I could, for example, empty out everything possible from Perception, Charisma, and Willpower and dump as much as possible into intelligence and the remainder into memory. Alright, so if I do that, 
anything based on intelligence memory will train really quickly. But anything that's based on something else, like say perception and willpower, is going to train really slowly. Advanced players will typically uh, plan out their skills a year in advance. Because the normal remap cools down every year. Let's click Cancel. Don't save the changes. Click Cancel or click the X in the upper right corner. That's also Cancel. Remaps are normally only available every year. So there's a standard neural remap available to me now because I haven't touched it before. If I remap, it's going to be one year, one real year, uh, before the next standard remap is available. I will have celebrated a birthday between then and now. It is a real year. If you want to remap anyway, every new character starts with two bonus remaps. So if you want to remap early and the timer is still cooling down, the timer will be left alone and one of your two bonus remaps will be used instead. You only start off with two. Normally these do not accumulate. Of course, CCP might hand out holiday gifts for Christmas, like, say, Christmas 2011, where people chose an extra bonus remap. But that's unusual and should not be relied on. So think very carefully and have a solid plan before you remap. I'm ta I've been talking enough about this. Let's go on to the next couple of missions. All right. For industry, Hoover and Air wants us to supply them with a civilian Galente shuttle. Normally, this is a trade mission. Normally, I would say for a trade mission, the agent doesn't really care where you get it from. With the exception that uh, civilian Galente shuttles are not a normal market item. You cannot buy them off the market. I don't think you can even get them off of contracts. So there's no way around this one. You're going to have to manufacture. Left click the blueprint. Uh, bill of materials, we need 3,375 tritanium. I'm not going to waste your time watching me mine Veldspar to go accomplish that. So I'm just going to buy the tritanium off the market. Uh, so let me click accept. Uh, he's going to warn us about cargo capacity. But that's only if we're going to shove this shuttle into our cargo hold and move it somewhere. We're not going to do that, we're just going to build it right here in station. So, let's click yes. Alright. Uh, I'm going to close that mission, and... Let's see. Right-click the blueprint, show info, what is it I'm missing? Oh, tritanium, right. Um, apparently the original estimate was a bit off, so I only need 3167 tritanium. So, right-click, view market details... Let me buy some tritanium. Where's the cheapest in station? Here we go. I need 3,167 tritanium. I will click buy. Close the market. Right-click the blueprint. Manufacturing. Pick an installation. All right, good. Slots are available. On second thought, I'm not going to make that assumption. You know what? Let's do it uh, the hard way. Let's pretend all of these... Let's pretend all of these assembly lines are busy. Because a lot of you will run into that situation, probably more than I care to think about. So, you see here, let's pretend all of these were busy for the next 12 hours. So what do you do? Change the range to current region. And then, click here for jumps, so you sort by number of jumps. So the next closest assembly plant is Luce 6 Moon 1 Federation Customs Assembly Plant. Look! All these free open assembly lines. I'm going to right click. I'm going to set destination. I'm going to close this window and get it out of my way. Kick cancel. I'm going to left click here. Stations. Clelanon 6 Moon 11. And add waypoint. Uh... Let's shove the blueprint in here. Let's shove the titanium in here. Let's get going. 
because a lot of you will probably actually run into a situation where your tutorial hub has busy, busy assembly plants because it's the weekend and everybody is trying EVE Online for the first time. So let's actually head over to Luce and do this. Now, your cargo hold is only 247 cubic meters. You're not going to be able to hit you're not going to be able to shove the finished shuttle into your Navitas cargo hold. So you're going to have to pull some tricks, and I will show you what tricks you have to pull. If the assembly lines in your local tutorial uh, in your local career funnel hub are not busy, you don't have to do this. But some pl new players will run into this problem, so I should probably tell you how to deal with it. I did not set the station as a waypoint for some reason. Alright. Science and industry. Installations. Current region. Luce, 6, Moon 1, right click and dock. If science and industry is not on your Neocom, you can find it under the, the Eve menu. Business, science and industry. Alright. All right, requested. here I am, docking, docking up. Shove the titanium into my station item hanger, shove the blueprint in there, right-click the blueprint, manufacturing. I'm going to pick an installation, double-left-click any of them, and click OK. This is going to take one minute, and we are going to accept the quote. Now, I can't shove the shuttle into this smaller cargo hold, so even if I empty out the ammunition, I'm not going to shove it into this smaller cargo hold. Even if I put on the expanded cargo hold modules into my low slots, it's still not going to be big enough. So what can I do? Well, it's a ship. it's a ship I'm building. I'm building a ship. Remember when you were originally flying around in your capsule? You can fly around in your capsule again. That's what we're going to do here. Now, flying around in just your capsule is mildly risky. If somebody shoots... If you're in a ship, and somebody destroys your ship unprovoked in high security space, um, you pop out into your pod. So you can still get away in your pod. But if you're flying around in your pod and somebody shoots at you unprovoked, well, then you're waking up in your medical clone. And if you're a really old player with millions of skill points, then you have to buy a really expensive new medical clone just in case of the next time you get pod killed. So flying around in a capsule is not too good of an idea, but you can do it when circumstances warrant. And in high security space, it's not terribly dangerous, and as a new player, you really aren't losing very much. Everybody gets a new clone alpha for free, and the clone grade alpha... You know what, I never really did talk about what a capsuleer is. You, as a player, are known as a capsuleer in the EVE lore. You fly around in a capsule. <laughs> the inside of your capsule has you suspended in pod goo made mostly of used okay. cell membranes. Alright, you're wearing a breathing mask and you've got uh, connection, okay. wired connections into your capsule, between you and your capsule, and then from there, from your capsule to the rest of the ship. And then according to the EVE lore, you are controlling the ship with your mind. So I'm going to right-click my Navitas and I'm selecting Leave Ship. 
And there's Professor Seamus Dunahoo's capsule. I'm going to right-click my capsule. I'm going to change the name. I'm just going to name it Capsule. And I'm going to click on Dock. So you're always in a capsule when you're outside of a station. So you're always in a capsule. It's just that usually your capsule is inside a bigger ship. Left kick, left click Luce and jump. So this is a capsule. So if your ship is destroyed, your capsule is automatically ejected. If your capsule is destroyed, that uh, those neural connections between you inside the capsule and the rest of the capsule, it includes, according to the EVE storyline, it includes what's called a transneural brain scanner. When your capsule cracks open, you're doomed. You're going to die. But your brain will be scanned every single neural detail, and that information will be transmitted uh, light years away to a waiting medical clone, and that neural imprint will be placed on the clone, and your consciousness wakes up in a new body. Hence the immortal capsuleer. Chances are very high that someday you are going to, your character is going to die, and it will come back to life in a new medical clone. Uh, I'm pretty sure it was Federation Customs Assembly Plant. Yes, Garun Investment doesn't have a factory. All right. There is a trick, though. You do have to keep your medical clone up to date. Now, right now, my character has 84,877 skill points. My clone grade alpha ha can cover 900,000. Every start, Everybody starts off with a new clone grade alpha. You created a character for the very first time, you get a clone alpha. You Thank just you. got pod killed. Requested. You get a new clone Thank alpha. Now, if you don't have... If you've, if you've got more than 900,000 skill points, you're going to have to upgrade your clone. Because if you're pod killed and your clone can't cover the whole thing, you lose 5% of the excess. So if you've got a million skill points, you've only got a clone alpha, and you get pod killed, well, you're 100,000 skill points in excess, you're going to lose 5,000 of those skill points. Generally something you want to avoid. And I docked up, and because I docked in a station where I don't have ships, I was automatically given a new rookie ship. I don't need this. I'm going to science and industry. Uh, the jobs tab, click get jobs button, find the job, deliver. Alright, there's my civilian Galente shuttle. I'm going to right click this, I'm going to assemble ship, I'm going to fly the shuttle back. And I don't need a new rookie ship. Uh, I'm going to trash this rookie ship. Make sure you only trash the Velator, not the shuttle. If you trash the shuttle, you're in trouble. You can't complete the tutorial mission. Right click, change the name. I'm going to call it a shuttle. The reason I keep changing the name of my ship so that it doesn't have my own name in it has something to do with what's called a directional scanner. I'm not going to cover that in this series. Uh, just keep in mind, whenever you assemble a ship, change the name so that your own pilot's name is not in the name of the ship. And let me return to Clovelon. So I can't... I don't have any ships big enough that I could stuff one ship inside another ship. So I can just fly out of my capsule, go grab the ship, and then fly back in the ship always an option. A bit dangerous on the capsule only part of the journey, but um, should be reasonably okay in high security space. Like I said, you don't have to go through this whole rigmarole if assembly lines are free in Clelodon or wherever your tutorial, wherever your career funnel hub is.
Docking permission requested. Docking request accepted. Alright, I'm back in station. I'm gonna drag my Navitas up. I'm gonna right click the shuttle and I'm going to repackage. Let's talk to Hoover Nair. Let's actually get this done. Complete the mission. Request the next mission. Alright. We need to fly to an objective location and deal with a traitorous production assistant. So we're going to make ourselves look like an innocent, helpless miner and then shoot whoever shows up. Well, the NPC that shows up. Uh, what was the mission like Domencia was offering? Oh, you know what? Let's take care of balancing the books 9 of 10 first. Uh, Lloyd Mencier wants a couple of afterburners. We're in luck. We have a couple of afterburners lying around already. But if you need to get an extra afterburner, which I actually highly advise, you can right-click the afterburner icon, view market details, and I'm going to buy an extra afterburner right here in station. Price is a little high, but that's fine. I'm just going to get one. I want to keep one afterburner for myself. Uh, when am I training the afterburner skill? Let me move afterburners up in the queue and click apply. And close this. Alright, so I'm going to click accept. And then I am going to click complete mission since I already have the afterburners. Loic Dementia doesn't care where we get the afterburners from as long as we get him two of them. And they're a common market commodity. Buying them off the market is not a problem. I want to request the last mission in the chain. Uh, here, he wants us to manufacture 5,000 antimatter charge small for him. And he will provide the blueprint for the purpose. By the way, I bought a lot of extra antimatter charges, so I already have 5,000. I'll just give him 5,000 and the ones that I bought earlier. We don't have to manufacture it. We could if we wanted to. Uh, we could just buy it off the market like I did earlier. So I'm going to click Accept. The game's going to throw text at us about uh, manufacturing again. Get this out of the way. If you really want to manufacture, you can right-click the blueprint and show info. You're going to need Noxium, Pyrite, and Tritanium. The Scordite in the local asteroid belts, any of the celestial asteroid belts, uh, will have Pyrite and Tritanium, so that won't be a problem. Uh, you do need... In the Attributes tab, you'll see that the blueprint produces 100 antimatter charges. That's for a single run. Alright. Also, this is a blueprint copy. It can only produce so many things before its license runs out and the blueprint will be destroyed by whatever manufacturing facility you gave it to. We can produce 200 batches. So in all, we could produce 20,000 charges if we wanted. So we need 5,000. If you're going to make this stuff, you need to run this blueprint 50 times, so you'll need 50 Noxium, 19 times 50 Pyrite, 233 times 50 Tritanium. I'll let you do the mathematics, but that should come out to about 10,000 Tritanium or so, 1,000 Pyrite or so, and 50 Noxium. The Noxium, you might be best right-clicking and viewing market details and just buying it off the market. Uh, keep in mind, there is a manufacturing time, 4 minutes per run, so this is going to take about, oh, 3 hours or so. I'm not going to do that. I'm especially not going to make you wait f through 3 hours of nothing video. So, I'm just going to give him some of my charges and complete the mission, and that finishes the business chain. Congratulations. I will talk about the Iteron later, but if you're on a trial account, you can't make use of this we'll deal with the junk at a later time. Back to making mountains of mole molehills, 9 of 10. Let's open the fitting window. Skill training completed. Ah, cybernetics is finished. Good, good. Um, since cybernetics finished training, I'm going to right click. Hold on. Open my training queue. I need to pause this.
Do not ask me again. Limited social adaptation chip. Plug in. Yes, I want to use the implant. I'm going to leave that checkbox alone this time, since I always want confirmation on that. Implants are lost when you are pod killed, or when you unplug them. So the implant will be destroyed if I have to pull it out to replace it with a new implant. Then I will click apply. You have to pause your skill training in order to plug in an implant, and always make sure the number is ticking down before you close the window. I need a mining laser. Right click, clear group. Double click my ship. Let's shove the antimatter charges into the cargo hold. Uh, I'm going to remove the weapon, and I need a mining laser. So I'm going to put on the miner one. I don't need the civilian analyzer. Uh, I can put on expanded cargo hold for more cargo capacity while mining. Close the fitting window. Uh, accept this mission. And close. And let's undock. Alright. Right click empty space, making mountains and molehills, encounter dead space, warp to location. Warp drive. Now, the way this mission is scripted, the hostile is not going to show up unless we do some mining work. That's why we need the mining laser. If you're using mining drones, I'm not sure mining drones will work, but let's go to the utility tab. Let's lock up the nearest Kernite asteroid. And start the mining laser. Let's switch back to our default overview tab so that we can see ordinary things that show up. Uh, Kernite is processed in batches of 400 and takes up a volume of 1.2 cubic meters. So, this is processed in batches of 500 cubic meters each. I can't hold a full load of Kernite on my cargo hold. Pity. I just skipped ahead to the part of the video where the Corelli initiate just showed up, so I'm going to control left click on him. I'm going to zoom out my camera so I can see where he is. I'm going to left click the initiate and hit F1 for my actual weapon. I'm also going to approach the Corelli initiate. Let me stop firing. I'm not going to hit him from six kilometers out. There are weapons that can hit six kilometers out. A light electron blaster is not one of them. All right, now I'm going to start shooting. And control space bar to stop moving. Now I'm hitting him. Now the wreck icon is empty, so there's no loot on that, but there is a cargo container. I'm going to click open cargo and there's the production assistant. This is a mission where your objective drops in a separate cargo container. By the way, for missions of this type, it's possible for another player to warp in, steal your objective item, and hold it hostage. He may not give it back to you unless you pay him a lot of money. I think that's a violation of CCP rules if it's in a tutorial mission. But once you're out of the tutorial missions, there is no such protection. So in general, you want to be uh, very on the ball about getting your mission loot. Because on a non-tutorial mission, if somebody steals your mission objective item, that's legitimate gameplay. The game masters will not help you, and your options are either pay the other player's ransom or fail the mission. I'm going to stop my mining laser, I'm going to dock up in station. 
Oh, by the way, these are ordinary asteroids. Kernite is a standard asteroid type. You could right-click, save location, and click submit, uh, preferably before you actually go into warp. But they're part of the mission scenery. So if I turn in the mission and then I warp back to that bookmark, the Kernite is going to be gone. Because it was part of the mission scenery, the mission is done, the game cleared away the mission, so there's nothing there anymore. If you want the Kernite, drop off the production assistant in station. He's not going to run away anywhere. Docking it's escape proof. Requested. It's an escape proof items hanger. And go continue mining Docking the Kernite on your own. Accepted. But don't turn in the mission yet. If you don't care about the Kernite, you can turn in the mission now. So that's what I'm going to do. Shove the Kernite into the hangar, shove the production assistant into the hangar, right-click Hoover and Air, start conversation. I'm not going to go wasting your time mining Kernite. Uh, when you're actually playing the game, you can go ahead and mine the Kernite if you wish. Wait till you're done mining the Kernite, then turn in the mission. So, I'm going to click Complete Mission. The Kernite is now all that was in space is now gone. And I'm going to request the last mission of the industry chain. And he wants us to manufacture a Navitas, and he will give us a blueprint for the purpose. And that is going to take an hour and a half to manufacture, if you want to actually manufacture it. You could manufacture it from minerals that you mine. The Zygene, Noxium, and such you might have to buy, but the Pyrite and Chitanium should be easy enough. Again, you can right-click any mineral and view market details. Ah, finally, Afterburner. So, you can buy any of the minerals you need off the market. Prices might be a little bit higher in Clelalon than elsewhere in the region, or whatever the case is for your particular tutorial, uh, tutorial hub. You could manufacture it. We were given two Navitas frigates as rewards from the agents. If you didn't lose any of them to exploding, you should still have at least one. So you can just hand him back the extra Navitas that you have. So just click accept. It's going to warn you about cargo capacity. Uh, you need 2,500 cubic meters if you were going to move a package Navitas in your cargo hold. But we're not going to do that. It's already right here in station. Just click yes. And then complete mission. We'll just give him our extra Navitas. And it will give us another Iteron as a reward. So that completes the business and the industry chains. Uh, I'm going to stop the episode here. In the next episode of How to Survive EVE Online, we will go through the military chain. In the meantime, thank you for watching. <laughs>